Hello, welcome to my Knowledge Management Technology Tutorial. My name is Rachel and I'm a doctoral student in Franklin University's Instructional Design Leadership Program. This tutorial is part of course requirements for the organizational learning and knowledge management. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at Google Drive. We'll discuss how to use the Google Drive utilities, how this can be used as a knowledge management system, and then have a brief reflection on whether or not Google Drive would be the right solution for the project I'm working on in this course. First, let's explore Google Drive. Google Drive works basically the same as the drives and folders that are on your computer. In the drive, you can create folders and files to keep your work organized. Let's create a folder. Select New and Folder. Give your folder a title. Let's call this one KM, short for Knowledge Management, Technology Tutorial. Click Create, and you can see that the folder was added below to my list of folders. I can double click on it to access. Now that I have a folder, let's add some documents since we're potentially going to use this for a knowledge management system. One option is to upload a document that you've already created. You can do this by selecting New, File Upload, locating the file, and either double-clicking it or highlighting it and selecting Open. You can also create new documents using the available built-in programs. Select New, and then select the application in which you want to build a document. For example, if we wanted to create a presentation deck, we can use Google Slide. With files uploaded or created, you now have a centralized location for documents that are stored in the cloud, allowing you to access them from many devices. One of the greatest benefits of Google Drive is that documents and folders can be shared. Multiple contributors can review, edit, and create in your folders and files with your permission. To share a folder, first open the folder by double-clicking on it. Next to the folder name, there's an arrow. Select it, and then select Share. Here you can enter the name of the person you'd like to share, and Google will search your contacts for a matching email, or you can just type the email address. You can also determine the permission level for the identified users. Select the arrow next to the pencil. Here's where you can determine if you want this user to be able to organize the folder, create new documents in the folder, or edit existing documents. You can also select a view or read only permission. I want to use this tool as a potential collaboration space, so I'll select the first option. I can add a note as well to explain why I'm sharing this. Then click Send, and the link to your folder will be sent to the users. They can begin to view, organize, add, and edit in the folder. That's how you share a folder. Let's say that you don't want to share the whole folder, you just want to share a specific document. You can do that too. First, access the document by double-clicking on it. In the top right corner, is a blue button that says Share. If you hover your mouse over it, you can see the current permissions. To edit those permissions, click on the Share button and follow the same steps that we took with the folder. Select a name and the permission level. At the document level, the options are slightly different. Notice that you can select Edit, Comment, or View. Edit allows them to change the document, Comment allows them to leave notes without actually making changes, and View is a read-only feature. I'm going to make this document a canned comment setting, and we'll look at that in a moment. Then, again, you can leave a note so they know what to do. Then select Send. The final feature I want to show you is the ability to leave feedback, as we just discussed. While in a document, to the left of the Share button is a bubble icon. When you click on it, it gives you the ability to leave a comment. So let me highlight a piece of text, 
and select Comment. You see that a pop-up window will appear where I can type my comments. Then select Comment. Those will now appear to the right side of the document. Now let's talk about how this could be used as a knowledge management tool. In Kimez Dalkir's book called Knowledge Management in Theory and Practice, she quotes Gray's definition of knowledge management that it is a collaborative and integrated approach to the creation, capture, organization, access, and use of an enterprise's intellectual assets. An integrated knowledge management cycle is also proposed to demonstrate a KM process. In this cycle, there's knowledge capture and or creation, knowledge sharing and dissemination, and knowledge acquisition and application. With these two descriptors of knowledge management, let's consider if Google Drive could potentially be leveraged in this way. We've seen that it can be a collaborative among users. Integrated means a combination of separate units into a whole, so there could be an argument that the Google Drive allows the separate people units or document units to come together as a whole. And in the Google Drive, the users are able to create, capture, meaning to make information explicit and able to be shared. Google Drive also allows access and ultimately use for the application of the knowledge in the appropriate settings. Therefore, Google Drive does meet the requirements in this one definition of knowledge management. With every tool, there are pros and cons. Let's review a few to ensure if we use Google Drive for our KM project that it's the right solution. From my experience, Google Drive is easy to use. The applications are capable to produce great documentation outputs. I can access it from my laptop, tablet, or phone so I can work on or reference items no matter where I am. I'm able to organize it in a manner that makes sense to me, and I can search for items if my organizational methods don't make sense later on. Google Drive has a page that describes all the features of using the drive. Go to google.com slash drive and select using drive. And on this page, you can see a lot of the different features. Now let's look at some of the cons. Google uses its own applications, so sometimes there can be challenges when you need to use the drive in conjunction with other applications, such as Microsoft Office. Most of the time I haven't experienced a problem, but you will see fewer bells and whistles in the Google applications. The biggest disadvantage is that the organization in which I'm partnering with for my class project does not allow access to Google Drive because of proprietary information and security. Considering all the above information, it's clear that Google Drive is a comprehensive tool that can facilitate the contribution, sharing, and collaboration efforts that are key to a Web 2.0 based knowledge management tool. However, the limitations on the organizational access will require looking at other tools that may be able to accomplish similar efforts. An example may be to use a Microsoft SharePoint, as this is a tool that can be used in similar ways and that all members of the organization both have access to and experience with using. Thank you for joining me today in this exploration of Google Drive as a knowledge management tool. Have a great day and keep learning.